Welcome, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody here. We're a little sparse today, but I guess there's still a lot going on. I'm just going to set that right down there. Be careful. Be gentle. Be gentle. Never thought to do that before. Today there was a new thought. It works. Take the darn thing out and set it down. It's amazing. Well, why didn't you do that 100 years ago? I didn't think of it. I didn't think of it. I asked a guy one time, a friend of mine, he was watching the balloons. And the balloon festival was going on in New Smyrna. He was watching the balloons. Driving his car. Oh, no. And he looked down and he ran into the back of another one. I said, was there room on the shoulder? Could you have just moved over? And he said, well, yeah. I said, then why didn't you? He says, I didn't think of it. <laughs> Maybe today, brothers and sisters, we'll get new thoughts. Maybe we'll have some new thoughts. Well, you know, I generally don't write everything down like I did this morning, but the Lord got me up very early this morning and my pen just went crazy. So, I don't know. Christ's burden is easy. I'm the one, brothers and sisters, who makes it difficult. Amen? Amen. 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 His yoke is easy, but my insubordination makes it difficult. My lack of coming to Him makes it hard. Makes it hard. We talk about how hard the way is. Why is it? Jesus says that the way isn't hard, doesn't he? What makes it hard is you and I. We make it hard. Maybe today we'll have a new thought. Maybe we'll follow in a brand new way. Let's turn, you know, like I said, 1147. 1148. So don't get mad at me. Let's turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to do a little reading from the Bible today. Is that okay? Sounds like that wind is going pretty good out there. Doesn't it? There's probably still some broken leaves or broken limbs up in them trees up there somewhere that's waiting to fall. Now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee Thou and thy son and thy son's son in all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Do you, you hear a promise there? Yes. Where, where does that promise come from? Fifth commandment. Pardon me? Fifth commandment. The fifth commandment. It is, it doesn't it? It does say that, doesn't it? Well, this might take some getting used to it. And what does that commandment say? Absolutely. A commandment with a promise, huh? Mm -hmm. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Hmm. If they're truly in our heart, right, and we're truly in love with our master, then this should be easy, right? I mean, it should be hard. It should be easy, right? It should. Because the focus is where? On serving my master instead of myself, right? Now, where's the focus? Terrific, wonderful me, huh? Mm. And then we wonder, we say, well, oh, this yoke is so hard. 
The yoke isn't the hard thing. It's not hard at all. Because when you hook to the yoke, what, what's a yoke look like? Yeah, yeah. And doesn't Jesus always carry the weight? Isn't he more willing, the Bible says, to forgive than we are to even ask? Ooh, there you go. I just thought I'd rip my head off. <laughs> I don't know if I like this mic so much. I wanted you to get it comfortable before we started. Well, it was on my belt. We'll get it comfortable. Did you switch it on mute? I didn't do anything to it. It's not on. Did you pull yeah, the plug is. out of the yeah, top of it? Here. It's on. Everybody can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still up. That's where is that thing? Right here. Oh, it's farther away from It's strange. <laughs> okay. Back to what we really want to be at here. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently. What's that word diligent? Is that, is that a strong word? What does that word mean, diligent? Extreme importance, doesn't it? unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. Hmm. So the Jews did this pretty literal, didn't they? He said, yeah. I mean, they really did. But what, what does God really want to do with this? He wants to impress the image upon your heart, huh? When the angels in heaven first heard that there was, there was a law, they were blown away. They were blown away. That they had been doing this, that they didn't even realize that well, how can we do anything else? You know? Beautiful. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee unto the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, and vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Messa. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers. Do we want to possess the good land? Okay. To cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord hath spoken, and when thy sons take when thy sons ask thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say to thy sons, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt and upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these things, statutes, all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always. Do you hear that? And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes and to fear the Lord our God for our good 
always. Boy, that should be on your right in your Bible. That he might preserve us alive as, it, as at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we, do, we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord and our God as he has commanded us. The Lord is really looking to lead us. And there is really nothing new. Is there? The Lord has tried to continually lead us in the same path as He always has. And we choose to walk aimlessly. I'm trying to find something I'm talking to here. Aimlessly in the desert. Why is it that we like the desert so much? Because we like to go our own way? I'm looking up, if anybody wants to follow me, 5 Testimony, chapter 69. An impressive dream. When, when he speaks about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what is he speaking about? Whenever he talks about those three, what is he speaking about? Tell us. He's speaking about the covenant. That's Absolutely. what he's speaking about. Every time he, every time he says that throughout the Bible. And we are going there today. We'll be getting there. I'm in 5 Testimonies, chapter 69, 572.2. I have been writing upon the first volume of Great Controversy, and it makes me feel very solemn as I review these important subjects, creation and the events from the fall of Satan to the fall of Adam. The Lord seems very near me as I write, and I am deeply moved as I contemplate this controversy from the beginning to the present time. The workings of the power of darkness are laid clearly before my mind. Most trying times are before us, and Satan, clad in angel robes, will come to souls with his temptations as he came to Christ in the wilderness. He will quote scripture, and unless our life is hid with Christ in God, he will surely bind our souls in unbelief. Time is very short, and all that is to be done must be done quickly. The angels are holding the four winds, and Satan is taking advantage of everyone who is not fully established in the truth. Every soul is to be tested, every defect in the character, unless it is overcome by the help of God's Spirit, will become a sure means of destruction. I feel as never before the necessity for our people to be energized by the spirit of the truth. For Satan's devices will ensnare every soul who has not made God his strength. The Lord has much work to do, and if we do what he has appointed for us to do, he will work with our efforts. Amen? God's way is constant, and he never changes. Why is that? Because he's God. Because he's perfect, right? Perfection doesn't need change, does it? You know, God is is He's He's like always and like never before. Because there's so much depth to God that we can't, we can't peel it all back. We can spend eternity trying to fathom the greatness and the glory of Almighty God. He's revealed some wonderful things to us. Do we take the time to dig in and try to understand these things that He's given to us? You know, the problem with most Christians is they got all this, you know, this, this knowledge with no depth. No depth. That's where the intimacy is, is in the depth, knowing what you know. Amen? Amen. Let's turn to Hebrews. Hebrews. Chapter 8. 
chapter 8 and verse 10. Going to where Jim was talking about. Start in verse 10 and we're going to read down to 13. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquity will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth away. A waxeth old is ready to vanish away. I need to think about these explanations. Let's turn to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 and verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. What does those couple of verses sound? Does that sound like victory to you? It sure sounds like victory to me. Many of our leaders stand at the gate. They stand at the gate. Let, let, me, let me tell you something here. Hebrews chapter 13, what, what does it say in verse 12 there? Hebrews 13 verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, did what? Suffered without the gate. Suffered without the gate. Okay. Many of our leaders stand at the gate and claim that we can't walk without sin. We can't walk without sin. That's what they claim. Doesn't Jesus promise that there will be a people? Yes. Doesn't he say that there will be a people? Amen. So why are we listening to the enemy, even if he comes from among us? Do you think the enemy is going to come from outside, brothers and sisters? Hello? It's pretty simple to see. If you're going to destroy something, it's far better to destroy it from within. And I don't even want to get started on this country. Because I refuse to go call it at home. My tongue gets real fat. I start getting a little shaky and I get more good. I'm not going there. As Satan's agents, they have bought him more time. But God's word shall not fail, but will prevail. Shall we wonder, wander, who came with my own brain? Shall we wander in the desert any longer? It has been 172 years since God has opened the second apartment of the sanctuary. Amen. Will we continue to walk aimlessly in the desert, following cunningly devised fables because of our lack of faith? While standing on the borders of Canaan, we must stay in the lines of God's leading. The old paths today seem new because they aren't being taught. They've lost their way. Do you realize that colleges like Harvard and Yale, do you know where their inception was? Do you, do you understand who they began as? The Bible was the most important book. Where have them colleges gone to today? Yeah, steps at the university too. That's a, yeah, not far away. Our own colleges, I'm not even going to go with that. Our theologians have become bored because they left the path of Christ's righteousness for worldly presupposition, i.e., rabbi such and such, elder such and such, 
and not the straight testimony of God's Word. Which is Jesus, our Lord, and righteousness. Jeremiah 23.6 People tell us that the old ways are too rigid. They're too rigid. We must think outside the box. Isn't that what we hear? Oh, you got to think outside the box. But we, the people of God, should say, whoa, wait a minute, brother. Doesn't God keep his way in a box? Mm. Mm. In the most holy apartment of the sanctuary? How about letting him put that very box in our hearts? What were we created for anyway? Lord, we are tabernacles, brothers and sisters. That's what we're built for. This is where we will excel. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're trying to reinvent the wheel. We want to teach fish how to walk. It's stupid. It's absurd. We've left the old paths. Not as a tattoo does he want to put this box in our hearts. Or a piece of jewelry. Ha ha ha, there's a play on words. But as the very fiber of who and what we are. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Way too silent. Way too silent. <laughs> it is heavy stuff. It's too heavy for this guy, but it's stuff that needs to be said. And God just started my pen at 2 o'clock this morning, and I was writing so fast I couldn't even, I couldn't even read my own writing. Matthew 11, 25. Matthew 11, 25. We're all there to say amen. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All. Where am I? Yeah, I started with 26. I knew I was missing something. Sorry. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hath revealed them unto babes. Is there anything new under the sun, brothers and sisters? Is there anything different going on today? Hello? Is it rocket science? Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Every word that cometh from the Lord Jesus Christ is nothing but truth. He cannot lie. He has never lied, because everything he says becomes exactly what he said, even if it hasn't been. He was speaking into existence by speaking. Do you understand what kind of power we're talking about here? The Bible says that all things consist, they hold together by the power, by the word of his power. That's what the Bible says, by the word of his power. Scientists have taken molecules and put them in such a, such a microscope that's so powerful. You can't believe the things that it reveals. The things that hold you together are like little crosses. They're like little crosses. It's amazing right down to the molecular structure. God cannot be 
explained away. He is real and he is here today and he is on fire. His love is so hot that his people have to be fireproof to be with him. Do you understand that? This isn't a passive relationship. This is real heat. This is intimacy. A love and a fire that you can't handle without God burning in your heart. There's a labor going on, brothers and sisters, for the soul and mind. There's an enemy that never gives up. I don't know if any of you have this struggle, but I have a terrible struggle every single day to give my will to the Lord. I fight a horrible battle. And this week has been horrible. Horrible this week. I knew God was going to do something this week because it's just been so bad. I mean, phew. I mean, I got squirrels falling out of the trees trying to take me out. You know what I'm saying? It's been crazy stuff happening this week. I can't even get into some of the detail because I'd be too embarrassed to admit that I barked at my wife, hollered at my daughter. You know? I'm ashamed of myself. I really am. It's a struggle. It's a struggle to give your will to God. Do you have this struggle? Am I alone? No. 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 I had a guy come to fix a fridge at the house. And he was going to just leave. Because Sears screwed the paperwork up. And we have two, two refrigerators under warranty, but they had both fridges under the same number. So this guy was just going to leave. I'm like, what? you can't just leave. He's going to do. And he says, well, you have to pay cash. I said, well, I'll pay cash then. Sometimes it's hard to hold your Christian witness and not lose your temper. Oh, I got a lot of them. My response is hard. Not his yoke. Not his yoke. It's my insubordination that makes it hard. Brothers and sisters, I want you to turn your Bibles to Isaiah. Isaiah in verse 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Oh. I said verse 26. I'm all excited up here. I just love opening the Bible. You know, I just love to hear the pages. I really do. It's a beautiful sound. Somebody who loves the Lord. Isaiah 26, 1 through 3 is what I'm going to read. If you're all there, I'll go. Amen? Amen. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Amen. Ooh. Ooh. Do, you, do you hear that? In that day shall this strong be sung. Shall this song be sung in the land of Judah? We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Walls and bulwarks. Have we forgotten why we put up walls? Do walls protect things? Hmm. Everybody today wants to tear every wall down. Tear every fence down. And they don't even stop for a moment and think, why did we put it there in the first place? Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. If there wasn't walls in the sanctuary, could there be a sanctuary? Verses 20 and 21. Jump down there. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. 
For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Do you hear that? Do you hear that end time church? Do you hear that God's people 